It's Fire Prevention Week here in our city, and we're down here at the Chinook Home Depot. We put the call out to viewers to bring in their used smoke alarms, and they've just done that. It's been a very busy morning here. And joining us is a very familiar face, Carol, with the Calgary Fire Department. So tell us a little bit about Fire Prevention Week. So the theme for Fire Prevention Week is look, listen, learn, be aware, fire can happen anywhere. And that is so true. So the focus for us here in Calgary is the proper disposal of smoking materials. If people remember, we had a lot of fires in May and June that we figured out were as a result of the improper disposal of smoking materials. Devastating fires left a lot of families homeless, very sad. And so we really want to highlight how important it is if you are a smoker, if you have a smoker who's going to visit you, family members, have an appropriate place for them to put their cigarettes. And by appropriate, I mean a sturdy metal container that has sand or water in it and preferably a lid so you can close it off. We get uh, some really significant weather fluctuations here in Calgary, lots of wind, things can get tipped over easily. Uh, it's fuel to the fire if a little fire starts. So it is really, really important to have something like this. But what's also important is to make sure that you empty it regularly because if you have a whole bunch of cigarette butts in there, then that can combust as well. And it doesn't take too much for a fire to start, especially if you have an ashtray or receptacle close to your siding, decking, anything that will burn. We still unfortunately see people putting their cigarettes in planter pots. This has organic material in it, will smolder for hours and burn. And surprisingly enough, that can even happen in the wintertime. On a sunny day, you know, typically these are close by the home. It's sunny, it warms up. We see these types of fires even in the winter. So really, all year long, make sure you have a proper place to put your smoking materials. And it's just that easy. I mean, you even have a, a teapot here that you can use. Yep, I found this teapot at a thrift store. It was very inexpensive. I filled it with sand. There's a lid to it. Just make sure you empty it regularly. And this year's theme, break it down for us step by step. So look, look for anywhere where fire can start. The two most common places we see fire start is in the kitchen, cooking left unattended, and then outdoors due to the improper disposal of smoking materials. So listen, listen to the smoke alarm. You need to make sure that your smoke alarms are working and your carbon monoxide alarms. Test them monthly, change the batteries at least yearly, and every 10 years replace your alarms, okay? Lastly, you need to learn. Learn two ways out of every sleeping area. So the most common way is the door, then the window. They need to be easily accessible, easy to open. And if you have a bedroom on the second level, you need to have a home escape ladder. Look, listen, learn. Three small steps, but they can make a big difference. Where can people go for more information? Well, we have lots of information on our website, calgary.ca slash fire prevention. Fantastic. Carol, thank you for your time. And coming up, we are going to get some tips and a couple demonstrations that could save your life or the life of someone you love. We are down here at the Chinook Home Depot for Fire Prevention Week with Sharon Cooksey from Kidda, arguably the busiest lady in the store. You've had so many people coming up to you today, and you've been able to answer all of their questions. Well, thank you, and it's been a true delight. We just love interacting with Calgarians and helping them to stay safe and keep all of their safety equipment up to date and checked and installed. And you have a very easy four-point system for that we're gonna go through to help keep people safe. We sure do. And we understand that buying and installing safety equipment, smoke alarms, carbon monoxide alarms can be a little daunting. It can be a little confusing at times, like what equipment do I need? So we have a very simple formula to help occupants, homeowners, residents understand what they need to keep them and their family safe. Fantastic. And you have a display for us, so why don't we go through it step by step, starting with the smoke alarm. Sure do. So step number one out of four easy steps. Step number one is obviously install a smoke alarm. Install a smoke alarm on every floor of the home, at least one on every floor of the home, one outside of sleeping areas, and one inside every bedroom. 
And please keep in mind that smoke alarms are designed to last for about 10 years. And after that, they need to be replaced. Let's move on to the carbon monoxide detector. Absolutely. So carbon monoxide alarms, carbon monoxide is a serious issue in North America. Um, on average, one person per day dies from carbon monoxide poisoning in North America. Absolutely. Yes. I did not know that. Absolutely. And that's why this is step number two. It's so critical. Mm -hmm. Carbon monoxide is created by basically any appliance that doesn't um, use electricity. So anything powered by natural gas or kerosene or propane or even wood burning creates carbon monoxide. So you can see why it's so important to have alarms in your home. So the placement's very similar to that of a smoke alarm so at least one on every floor including the basement one outside of the sleeping areas and one inside of every bedroom and how often are we checking those again that's another 10 year time span so the older alarms are about seven years newer carbon monoxide alarms are 10 years and then moving on to fire extinguishers so absolutely so fire extinguishers are very important here's one thing that a lot of people do not realize is that fire extinguishers are designed to put out a very small fire mm -hmm. like one in a waste basket or to create a safe path out of the home in case of a larger fire. So they're not really designed to put out large or medium fires. They're really designed to put out a small fire or to create a way for you to get out of the home. So we recommend this multi-purpose fire extinguisher here. They're classified as an ABC rated fire extinguisher. It, it um, extinguishes fires created by wood and textiles and trash, liquids and electricity. So that's what an ABC rated fire extinguisher is. And then the BC fire extinguisher here is especially for the kitchen. That's what we recommend for the kitchen. So for a complete home package, we would recommend at least one multi-purpose fire extinguisher on every floor and then one kitchen rated fire extinguisher, obviously near the kitchen. All right, terrific. For more information and links on all of the Kita products, you can find those on our website, breakfasttelevision.ca. We are down here at the Chinook Home Depot for Fire Prevention Week with the lovely Sharon from Kitta. So we are going to take an in-depth look at smoke alarms. Right off the top, let's go through how often we should change them and what we should be looking for. Thank you for asking this. So common misperception is that smoke alarms last forever, but they don't. They're designed to last for about 10 years. And the reason why, if you think about where they're at, they just collect dust and dirt that's in the household, like everyone's house has. So it just makes sense that after about 10 years, it's time to replace your smoke alarms even if they're battery operated. Here's another falsehood. If I just change the batteries, my smoke alarm's still working. That may not be true. That's why we uh, advise everyone to change it around that 10 year hallmark. Okay, and then visually you will see that it has been about 10 years because they change color. They sure do. So this is a brand new alarm. It's white. It's this brilliant, beautiful white. Um, over time, they will age to be brown, tan, gray. Any color other than white is an indicator that it's potentially time to replace your alarm. So please, everyone remember, replace the alarm, not just the batteries after 10 years. And let's say I've replaced it. I forgot the date. I don't know if it's been five years, seven years, how can I check if I can't remember? So easy to do. Pull it down from the ceiling, a simple twist and look on the back. There should be a manufacturing date on the back of the alarm. If you have forgotten to put the sticker on the side of the alarm with your installation date, mm -hmm. just go by the manufacturing date, which is printed on the back of the alarm. Okay, very easy. Now it's time for me to change it, which brings me to this aisle. A lot of options, it can be overwhelming for people. How do they know what alarm is right for them? So your first stop is building code. So in Calgary, the, build, the current building code for new builds and renovations is a hardwired alarm that are interconnected. And basically what interconnected means is that the alarms talk to each other. So when one sounds, 
every alarm in the house sounds. And that's really important and it's beneficial to homeowner and occupant because it gives extra seconds to escape from a burning building. So definitely if you look here, you'll see that there are a variety of hardwired alarms. And then here's your interconnected here with a built-in, and this is a uh, critical, a built-in 10-year battery, which means that there's no battery changes ever over the life of the alarm. And at the 10-year mark, it'll signal you an end-of-life chirp, which means it's just time to replace that alarm. It takes the guesswork out of it. Okay, terrific. Sharon, thank you so much. Great tips. For more information, just go to Kidda's website and for the link, just go to our website, breakfasttelevision.ca.